Yes, sir. They just grow up so fast, don't they? Not fast enough. <laughs> no, no! Oh, no! Gregory will now be talking to you. from now, look back on my desk. Declan, you may. I imagine that I'll get to the point where I don't want me to show up. So, anyway. Who did you? Me too, me too. Welcome back to another episode of The Roads Less Traveled. I am the delightful Declan, joined with the... Clever Canal. Yeah, yes. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I forgot my word at no, first. No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, C word. Yeah, you, I mean, that's not very clever of you, but oh. it's, I mean, it's okay. Yeah. This is off to a really bad start. <laughs> uh, no, she is absolutely clever. She's every other kind of C-word you can imagine. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, before we jump into kind of the meat of this episode, um, something I like to try to do with these new interviews is just kind of talk about current events and like mm-hmm. what's going on in the world and keep people topical and yes. on top of things. So the, the really only story I have to talk about is the Scott Adams shit, um, which, so before talking about this, are you familiar with the Dilbert comic? I, I'm familiar with the comic. I don't know a ton about this story. So yeah. I, I'm I interested up, to hear some more about this. Yeah. I pulled up a picture for Canal. If you don't know who Scott Adams is, he is the creator of Dilbert and Dogbert, a popular comic from, I believe, 1989. Um, is when it started and basically the iconic uh, character is known for workplace banter and just funny mishaps happening in office life um <laughs> that's darren being darren the cat um but he's he's recognized for his upturned tie and all that shit but um scott adams this past week on his youtube live basically um, cited a specific poll uh, on the Rasmussen report. Rasmussen report. I don't know how to pronounce that, but Rasmussen report poll that stated forty-seven percent of Black people said it was quote not okay to be white. He then went on to quote and say, um, "If nearly half of all Blacks are not okay with white people, that's a hate group, and I don't want anything to do with them." Based on how things are going, the best advice I could give white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just get the fuck away. (laughs) What? Yes. Uh, He goes on to say, just get away because there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. Scott Adams then talked about moving to a neighborhood with a low concentration of black people, specifically. Oh, my God. So, obviously, after this happened, um, pretty much every source that was running his comic strip um, since 89 has dropped him yeah um, he has lost like all funding Good. all all this stuff um i hope I think, he can't afford that neighborhood anymore yeah i it's it's very it's interesting um just because i so i have a few thoughts on this one I, as the the optimist in me mm-hmm. um i don't think it's it behooves anyone to to just make blank blanket statements of like this can't be fixed this is like not okay secondly i will say listening to a different podcast um, and video on Vox, um, they talked about this particular Rasmussen report um, is kind of known, I guess, for making weird or, or stating weird questions to people that would need more explanation. Like yeah. the, the question they asked was, is it okay to be white? And as a blanket statement, obviously I was just, I personally right now would just go ahead and say like, yes, it's okay to be white. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not one of don't those people. Yeah, don't feel bad. Um, <laughs> I'm not one of those people that's like, you need to. You should feel bad for everything that your ancestors did. Right. Um, that doesn't. That's not progressive. That doesn't aid anyone. Right. Um. So this question, is it okay to be white? It. It's. It really. I think the problem with it was stemming was stemming from like, you know especially during the Trump presidency, Mm -hmm. neo-Nazis and, like, the Proud Boys, people on 4chan, took this it's okay to be white statement and were, like, running with it, basically as bait for liberals, leftists, whatever. Right. Um, And so it's, like, obviously I have a problem with that or that specific group. Oh, sure. Um, But, yeah, it's okay to be white. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What what do you think? Um, I would, I mean, if the question were asked to me, I would say, of 
course it's okay it's okay to be yourself you yes. know you yeah. were you're literally like lady gaga says you're born this way <laughs> you know right yeah. um not much you can do about it now mm-hmm. um but yeah no i see what you mean with um the whole taking that statement it's okay to be white like too far of like i don't know i feel like it's not even like they're taking that statement anymore they've like morphed it into like a totally new one like it's the best to be white yeah. which um everybody's equal is not the best to be white mm-hmm. um it's okay to be white yeah. it is okay yes um but yeah i don't know and just the way that he so he was asked that question or he no he was not asked that question oh, okay. he just re- he found this poll the Rasmussen oh, report okay and it asked i don't know what the poll size okay, was but 47% apparently of the black people they asked said it's not okay to be white. Okay. So, yeah. I I think it's also, this is the annoying thing about statistics, polls, yeah. numbers, is you can find practically anything to back up oh, yeah. some kind of claim, depending on how many people you're asking, what people you're asking, yes. geographically where you're asking people. Like, it's, it is very, it's very nuanced. And this is, this is right. why I, I just don't enjoy, like, either more conservative or right-wing people only like using polls or statistics yes. because they it's there's a lot more nuance in human evolution than just right. yes or no black white like, exactly yeah, yeah no uh, okay i see i see now what's going on okay, yeah i get it yeah no i would sorry i was gonna say the no format. you're That's, literally all good um, no, it's, it's a hard <laughs> no you make a really good point about like the poll is also like it's not 50 percent of all black people said this. It's like 50% right. of the black people who were asked this question, which like could also be like, if you narrow it down to like, like you said, geographically, and then also um, just like, I guess, yeah, like, like you could also think about um, like age group. I feel mm-hmm. like for websites like that, it's probably going to be younger people on it. Right. And so like, if like you're just narrowing it down to like the younger population who like is on the internet a lot, and then also, like, I don't know, people people are silly on the internet. They probably took that question as lightly as they possibly could. And they were like, yeah, it's not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, I don't know. I, I find it hard to believe that 50% of, like, any group of people would say it's not okay to be white in general. And like right. you said, the question, like, uh, beckons more explanation and more questions beyond that. I don't know. I, I, I agree. I think it's really dangerous when... Um, when people take such specific information that backs up something that they believe in and then like use it as, as fact. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I should, I should say it's like not only obviously right wing people like leftists do that all the time. People on the left, more liberal people, they will, if you have a preconceived notion or idea, you will find something to back that up. Yeah. Which is why you have to try to, at the best of your human ability, (laughs) approach everything from like a non-biased point of view and just try to find like the truth the truth is somewhere in the middle yeah i'm a firm believer um kind of follow-up question to this because i i don't know if we've talked about this um slightly if not we're talking about it now i over the last couple of months have kind of I, I, the best way i've described it is a kind of red pilling myself <laughs> um only in the sense of and i don't even know if you could consider it red pilling i would not consider myself like a full right-wing person Um, but I've just started to try and listen to more voices from a diverse point of view, um, meaning more people that I disagree with, um, you know, like your, maybe your Joe Rogan's, Ben Shapiro's, Jordan Peterson's, Candace Owens, all this, this stuff. Um, I, I don't agree with a lot of things that they say, but I, you know, there'll be here or there, maybe a nugget that I'm like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. And I definitely over the past have like tried to past few months I will say like tried to break down what it is I believe and why is it do I believe that yeah and um I never want to be stuck in like this echo chamber of only hearing my own opinion and like only backed up by like what I believe I just think it's it can be a very dangerous area to be in so yeah um it's like yeah, the same you... as like surrounding yourself by yes men right like, you'll yes. never grow yeah change yeah no I see what you mean I think I think it's it's really good to to hear other sides of things um yeah. And, I mean, that could, like, 
that could solve all our problems in the world, you know, if we just listen to each other. Because, you know, like, I don't know, I feel like with with uh, debates or, like, even just, like, talking to your family about it, like, I don't know, I've noticed myself doing this. I'm, like, not always listening to the other side um, for, like, their points. I'm just, like, listening for, like, where I can back up my claim more, like, within their argument. Like, right. how I can, like, use stuff. I don't know. It, it's just... Um, I feel like there's definitely just, like, not enough, like, communicating, like, between the parties. It's definitely just, like, feeding feeding your own party information to, like, make the other party, like, seem demonic and, right. like, vice versa. And right. so just, like, really just, like, splitting, splitting everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, I mean, I think it's uh, Abraham Lincoln quoted as saying, like, uh, house divided falls like it yeah. I mean the infamous quote of the, it's there's truth in that and I I never want to and I, I definitely retrospectively can say this that I think more in high school and definitely college I was kind of more <laughs> hypocritical um, or I was being the hypocrisy that I claimed to like hate on the right or like I was being closed minded about certain things topics um and I never want to be as close-minded as what I'm preaching against. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, that does make sense. Yeah. With that said, I listened to Candace Owens react to this, and she talks specifically on his comments of um, talking about him uh, moving to a predominantly white neighborhood with less black people. And um, her thoughts, ideas on this of, like, why, why would he say that? And if you look into that deeper of, like, okay... Why maybe do people predominantly live in or choose to live in places with less mm-hmm. black people or predominantly more white people? And if you look just like at face value or again at a statistic number, whatever, um, there is unfortunately more crime within black communities and more, um, quote unquote, I guess bad things can happen in more predominantly black black brown areas Mm -hmm. so that with that said it's like it begs the question of like okay why is that why is that the way it is and so i like i i understand to a certain extent his idea of like you want to be safe like i mean us moving up here we 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 obviously we i would probably say we predominantly i don't think this is predominantly a black area that we live in in chicago uh in this particular area um but obviously those corners of of the city exists. I mean, similar yeah. to, to Springfield, the it was North Springfield was really predominantly black, and you could definitely see that Northern Springfield was more "quote unquote" run down and didn't look oh, as yeah. taken care of. Definitely. More food deserts. It's like those areas are not as cared for. Yeah. So it's like there there is more there's more nuance to it than just get away from black people, right. <laughs> like escape. And again, all back to, circling back to like my optimistic view is just you, you can't have change positive change without trying to understand each other yeah no uh you make some really good points and like it, to go back to like why certain neighborhoods are like safer and like it, it's it's truly just like i i don't know it, it's hard to it's hard to dissect it because yeah. I would say that, like, a really big reason is, like, because of, like, redlining Mm -hmm. and, um, like, basic, you know, racist things that the country was kind of built on. Right. And so, like, it's hard to, you know, know how to, like, break that down and, like, fix that when, like, it's kind of, like, built into the foundation. Right. The, I don't know, I I totally get what you mean, though, because, like, there there is a lot of nuance in than just, you know, living in um, a diverse neighborhood just to be living in a diverse neighborhood versus, like, picking, like, a safer area for the safe the safety of the area, I guess. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm not being the most, <laughs> the most uh, profound. No, 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 no. It's, girl, I'm not either. Okay? We're just, we're talking. <laughs> yeah. We're just chatting. It's us trying to, like, solve the world's problems in, in this little small 
group. Living room. We can do it. I know it. We can do it if we stay here long just enough. Just a little bit more time. If you all listen really hard. Just donate $50 <laughs> to Declan's Podcast. Declan's Podcast at um, Declan-Rhodes Venmo. Venmo. So, and then Canal um, Vanderford. Canal hyphen Vanderford. Venmo. It's my Venmo. Dollar sign. You want um, to. Yeah. 50 um, each. That's a, that's a non- Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. No, it's it's very hard. It's it's a lot more nuanced than I think people take at face value. Um, did we just solve racism? I think so. Yeah. I I think it's fair. Well done. Go well us. Done. Go us. Handshake, Handshake. for sure. We did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you're, yeah, if you're listening. Could you hear um, that? Could you hear, could the, you hear the shake? Could you hear the racism disappear? It's, it's gone. With that handshake? It's, if you listen really closely, you can't hear. I don't hear any racism. I don't hear a single racist thing going on. <laughs> Someone yells, like, slurs at us. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Alright, so it's not um, fully fixed. It's not fully fixed. No, it's, it's a day-by-day process, yeah. for sure. Um... One one mind at a time. Yeah. And maybe one maybe one mind listening today was opened with some kind of new thought yeah. or whatnot. With that said, I'd love to go into the reason I've asked you here today yes. for our main portion of this project. The entree. Um, the entree. Yes, that was just an appetizer. That was that was a, a little taste. An test. ethnic uh, <laughs> <laughs> ethnic appetizer for yeah. you. Um, we had some soul food in there. Yes. We had uh, we had. People trying to get away from soul food in yes, there. Yeah, yeah. Some um, really like un- unseasoned, unseasoned chicken <laughs> in there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, the full, full gambit. Okay. You do you remember when and or where we met? So I believe we would have met um, at the first improv workshop I came to. Um, met a lot of people that day. So I'll be honest, Declan, you didn't shine enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me to remember you. No, that's, that's but okay. If you, even if you didn't make that, that first impression, you made a very long-lasting one. Obviously, we are hanging out right now. You have a cat hair on your face. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh my god, no, don't apologize. Uh, fucking Darren is all over me. It just looks uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 it's like, I would want, I would You're want eating, that I would like, I'd like someone to tell me. Um... <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it would have been during improv, probably that first workshop. Um, I was pretty quiet then. I was really nervous to meet everybody because everybody, everybody's so cool. I know I would have first seen you on the stage at improv. So, I mean, as far as first impressions go, like, I knew you were very funny, very charismatic. Just, like, you light up the stage every time you're on it. And I just, like, I knew I wanted to be a part of a team that, like, had such wonderful people on it so yeah. it definitely would have been improv but um yeah as far as like first meeting i feel like it would have been pretty brief that day no it's literally it's okay this is exactly what happened with annalise as well i also i tend to not be the best with remembering how or when or where i meet people just mm-hmm. because i will like meet someone and then how I described to Ron was I, I engulfed them. <laughs> so I, I honestly, I don't remember like the first interactions, first talking to you either. Um, it just obviously naturally came with you coming to workshops and then being on the team. I will say, which I think I've talked to you about this before, you had done stand up on at Blue Room. Yeah. And you had posted it on your Instagram. And I think you had come to a couple workshops and I was like, you know, doing the typical our generation thing, stalking you yes. on your socials. Don't worry, and I did it to you too. Right, right, right. It's what we do. It's it's the natural order, it the is. way of things. Yes, um, you meet them in person, you yeah. meet them on the internet, and, and then you meet them in person. And then you learn, <laughs> you learn every single thing about them yes. that makes them tick. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... So I remember like going to your Instagram and looking at that, and I was like, oh, okay, this girl, she's hella funny. She's so fucking cool. Also because I just... I have, like, my amount of respect, to a certain extent, goes, like, 
out the roof to anyone who can get on a stage and do stand-up mm-hmm. comedy. It is like one of the hardest things. Yeah. It is. It takes balls. It takes kahunas. It takes yeah. ovaries. It takes every kind of fucking thing that you need to do. <laughs> and you did it. You fucking did it. Thank um, you. Yeah. No. And I, I remember, you, I think one of your jokes was like uh, about your brother being a doctor and you being into comedy. Yes. <laughs> um, which is just... Very he perfect. is currently, let me just fill you guys yeah, in, yeah, yeah. he is a medical student at Yale. Mm. So if that joke uh, didn't, it, it aged really well, mm-hmm. if anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, he's he's not only a med student, he's, uh, he's a med student at fucking Yale. Yeah, yeah. He I does that. For, oh my God. I forgot he was at Yale. Yeah. That's insane. That's crazy. All that to say, um, I just, yeah, I remember practice falling in love with you first sight oh um God. i will say also i remember one of our early like it would have been an improv practice together we were in a scene together and i don't even remember exactly what happened fully in the scene but i just remember you were playing my mom and like i was naked and you were painting me or something oh my God. like it it was so fucking weird it, it was, was. It, it was when we were still in carrington um I do remember that. It was so fucking funny. So funny. Also, now this is just making me think of other improv stuff I've seen you do and just been enamored by. I remember this wasn't at a show or a practice or anything. I guess it would have been a practice, Mm -hmm. but it was at, I believe, Annalise's old apartment in Springfield. And I think it was maybe like you, me, her, Julia, some other people. Uh, this was before Radical Leftovers or anything. Okay. We were we were doing an improv set and you just came, you entered a scene and were like only referring to yourself in the third person as Michelle or something. <laughs> oh my God. And you were like, Michelle hurts. <laughs> or like, Michelle's hungry. Oh my God. Um, yeah. And I just, I don't know why it's so funny to me, but anytime anyone refers to themselves in the third purple person, for third the purple. Third, the third. third purple. <laughs> Don't forget about the rainbow, guys. It's three purples. There's actually four points of view, and the fourth one is the third the purple. The third purple. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I... Uh, you're, you are so fucking funny. You're so hilarious. I think you, you're really smart, and you're poignant, and I definitely think that comes from, you know, your writing, and that kind of leads... Perfect segue into the next question of just, like, what would you say inspired you to because what when you entered Missouri State what were you majoring in um yeah I so when I first came to Missouri State I knew I wanted to do digital film and television production um that's what I got my degree in um but I I knew I I enjoyed writing comedy they're the first people that like kind of inspired me to like start writing um in my high school I think it was my sophomore year. I was in like a Christian living class. Um, Hold on, do to, Christian do living. <laughs> yeah, how to live like a Christian? Okay, um, okay, okay. But basically, the class was just kind of like it was very small. It was like eight of us. We just kind of hung out. We watched this guy. I think his name was Rob Bell. He wore a lot of scarves, and he taught he like taught us how to be Christian. Hmm. Um, and one of our assignments was to make a make our own Rob Bell video. And so mine was about the most broad topic you could do in Christian life. It was Jesus mm, is mm-hmm. what my topic was. A strong one, yeah. Um, and um, in it, I, I just like I kept doing bits the whole time because I was like, I want this to be really funny and weird. And like, um, in one of them, I was just like doing a really bad job playing basketball. Um, and and so that was really funny. And then. I was Korean Jesus at the end, and as I'm, like, walking away, I, like, evaporate into thin air, and it was, like, that was my first, like, experience with film that I was, like, oh, my God, this is really fun, and my teacher was, like, have you ever thought about doing film, and I was, like, no, Hmm. and then, um, and then when I graduated, I was, like, very into film, and so my my high school didn't have, like, any film, um, we we had, like, a photography class, and that was about it as Hmm. far as, like, film and photography goes so I was going into college like fully blind on it and um I will say like uh it was it was fun going to film school but uh the the class that like really like kind of woke up this like love for film and specifically for writing was one with 
Christina Pipa, she was my first, my beginning screenwriting class, and um, she was just like, she was just so inspiring and so, so kind and so uplifting and just like really supportive and like, she like, I don't know, uh, over, over time like it was, she like mentioned, you know, um, I guess maybe not in her exact words, but like kind of seeing something special in me yeah. and like um, she, she ended up uh, reaching out to me about a possible uh, grad program and it was right around COVID. So I did that writing program um, pretty much just because of her um, and also because of, you know, where I was in life. I, I graduated. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't feel prepared at all for the real world. Um, and she, she brought that to me and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And just like, being able to take more of her classes and like spend time, you know, under her wing pretty much. And it, it just like, it really changed. It changed my writing. It changed my like view on like TV and film. It just like, the program was very, very helpful to me, especially in just like doing a lot all the time. Like I was writing, filming, put on a play. It was a ton of stuff. Um, but I would say like, Christina Piva definitely had, like, one of the biggest impacts on me as a writer. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I Thank you. I love people inspiring other people. I, <clears throat> it's it, I've heard great things about Christina Piva, and funnily enough, she is the wife of the person who ended up being the musical theater or uh, BFA act coordinator of mm -hmm. uh, at Missouri State University, Joe Price. Joe Price. So... Um, that's that's amazing. I love that she was able to just leave that kind of lasting impact on you and yeah. kind of shift your mind and to see what, see like your own potential and ah, it just that's that makes my heart so warm and happy. And so yeah, you graduated in twenty twenty, correct? Yes, yeah. So uh, kind of talk us through that of just like you know up until. January, February, you know, we had heard of, like, COVID, and we were like, mm -hmm. okay, this is, like, a thing, sure, probably going to be, like, Ebola or H1N1, yeah. like, no one, I think, in their right mind, even January, February, had the idea that when we left for spring break mm -hmm. in March, we would never come we back. were never coming back, you didn't, unfortunately, get to, like, walk or graduate, like, you didn't get, like, those kind of final pivotal moments in what you, like, built up your four years yeah. at university, so, like, Kind of walk us through that of like what, what were you going through like I mean clearly you said you went to into this grad program but what were your thoughts yeah so that was like really disappointing I was definitely a COVID denier at first mostly just because I was like I don't want to I don't want to yeah. uh, no yeah. thanks yeah. no thanks pandemic not for me yes <laughs> yeah. um uh and so it, it did happen at like a really unfortunate time I had saved all of my, like, capstone projects for, like, the last semester, so I wanted to get all of the, like, shit work out the way and then just have, like, fun creative projects at the end, and COVID literally shut all of them down, so, like, my capstone and my, like, directing project, both films just, like, just didn't happen. It was, it was just kind of, like, I, and not to mention, this one's not even film related, but I was also taking a ceramics class. Oh, and you still have a bowl in the kiln I, somewhere? Literally, like, I never picked up all the stuff I made Oh, either. my God. It's on me. I waited too long. But I, like, my teacher was like, do you guys have access to clay at home? And we were like, absolutely not. Um, Go out mix some mud with water. Yeah. You got clay. For real. I was oh my like, God. What, what the fuck? What is this? And... And so I ended up for my ceramics class, my fun blow off writing or not writing, my fun blow off, you know, easy class. I'm writing papers for. Oh my god. That is how that is how my last semester oh was in undergrad. Um, and then yeah, I had my cool my cool cap uh, that I made, the ratatouille cap, <sighs> and I didn't get to walk with it. I had a whole thing. I was gonna like go on stage and pretend like the rat was controlling me, and I was like, whoa. As I went to get my diploma. Oh my god. Um, and then of course that did not happen. But luckily, the the grad program that I originally didn't really want to do, um, it like really saved me. I was able to like finally do 
I didn't finish the exact projects I wanted to, but, like, I was able to make new ones. I created the web series with Rachel Bartell, Annalie Schrader, and Kel Harper. Uh, Middle Class Snacks is the name of it. Very fun web series. We've got season two coming out soon. We're still in post-production. It's taking a second, but we're, we're really close on it. Um, did that. Made football play. Got to work with some really, really good actors for that. Um, and then got to perform that in a really cool space at Nathan P. Murphy's. Plugging a lot of people and places today. But, um, yeah, that was really cool. And then I also just, like, came out with just, like, much better skills of writing. Like, I felt like in undergrad, we just kind of, like, scratched the surface of each part of film. And then in my grad program, we, like, really went in-depth in, like, writing specifically and then also like producing our own stuff was kind of the focus of the grad program and so I felt so much more prepared like I actually feel like now if I were put in like a writer's room like I could survive it you yeah know? yeah when you sit down to write something or maybe um maybe you could enlighten us on maybe your own personal process of everyone every artist is different do you find yourself um having a spark of an idea, writing it down, and then using that to write something? Or do you kind of just free write, um, see what your fingertips produce? Yeah, um, I have a very hard time just sitting down and writing something, mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, forcing myself to yeah. produce uh, like writing. Uh, something that helps me and that I know has helped our group is the Bake Offs. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, something Christina Pipa mm -hmm. uh introduced me to uh basically you like everybody picks a word and like if there's like six of you everybody's got a word and then each word has to be used in like a two-page script um and it's really just to get your like your juices flowing but pretty much every time I've done a bake-off it sparked some kind of like pilot idea or like a series um I don't know the, it, it helps a lot to like work off of something and then you also mentioned like writing down a note or like an idea you had and then stemming it from there that's also something I like to do I've got like about a billion folders in my <laughs> yeah. notes of just like different ideas for stuff um, they're obviously not all good but like it does help to like go back through and like see like some good ideas and see if that like sparks any ideas from there yeah um yeah it's it's like impossible to just sit down and like write gold yeah, it, it's just to, like, force yourself to contrive really well-crafted mm -hmm. art. Um, no, I definitely, I get that. <clears throat> and I would agree that, you know, having your vault of ideas, um, you might have a billion, but a uh, hundred of them are money makers. Like, yeah. you, you will sign the check, you will make, do, do what you got to do with those. It, if you could close your eyes right now in this moment and wake up tomorrow morning doing exactly what it is you would love to be doing what what do you think that would look like um maybe like just a couple of things three things that you you think that maybe your day would consist of yeah um so my ideal situation if I could just wake up and be running my own show uh -huh. um that would be amazing be like a uh, showrunner head of the writer's room you know I've got my team of very talented friends around me. I, I, I fully believe in like you and Brandon and Annalise and so many other people around me. I'm like, we just need a foot in the door and then get everybody there. I would love to just be surrounded by the people that I love yeah. and doing, doing really big things together. Like I, there's nothing, there's nothing I want more than just to like have everybody there and, and be doing that. Um, so I guess, yeah, to, to run my own writer's room, that would be the first thing in the day. Um, I would also love to just, like, have a few celeb best friends, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, I think that'd be so cool. I'd be like, oh, yeah, no, I just, I'm going to go hang out with Amy Poehler later today. <laughs> yes, or, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, any of my, like, idols, if I could even just meet them, you know, as a fellow creator and not as just a fan, that'd be really cool. Um, and then I guess the third thing... Um, I don't know. I think it'd be really cool to, uh, do, like, producer meetings at, like, fancy restaurants where, like, 
I don't know, either I'm, you know, the one being, like, courted or I'm, like, trying to get somebody to sign on to it. But it's all on, like, the company's, like, card. Uh, so, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah you're having fancy meals <clears throat> with, like, celebrities or, like, important people. Not that not that other people aren't important, but, like, I just think that would be They're so less cool. Important. They're less important. <laughs> Sorry, everybody no, else. it's okay. You um, can say it. Just the important people at this restaurant. <laughs> the important people know who they are. Yeah. You, you know who you are. You know who you are. You can hit me up later. <laughs> but yeah, I I don't know. Just I guess I didn't I didn't think about it too much. I I, I really writer's room. That's yeah. the big one. Yeah. No. And then just having my friends around me. Yeah. No, I I definitely feel that it's, um, yeah. This this field that we are in feels very communal, and it feels like you, you as much as like you have your own journey growth. It feels very, um, you're only winning when, like, you're all winning, in a sense. Yeah. Um, and I, so I definitely, I, I feel you on that. Is there a show that you've seen recently um, that you, if you could become the head writer of it right now, mm. you would, like, that? that's a show you want to make, or, like, that's the kind of art you would love to produce? Ooh, okay. Um, a couple shows come to mind. Yeah. Um, a favorite that I, I would maybe want to be a writer on maybe not head writing any of these just because like I trust I trust the people who are already in charge of them yeah. um but I, I think I, if I were hired to be like on the writing team I could do well um for like hacks okay yeah. fucking love hacks yeah. it's so good I would I would kill to be a part of that show in any way um and then another one that uh came up pretty recently is Reboot mm. I very sad to hear that it was discontinued at least on Fox hopefully somebody somebody else picks it up or something hopefully yeah but um reboot is so good oh it's just so clever characters are really fun it's just done really well makes me laugh a lot um and then the last one that's like a very noteworthy show to watch is Abbott Elementary Mm. I would say like it's kind of the same humor I really like obviously I can't relate to everything in the show um but I don't know. That's that's they're just all such good shows. The writing is so good. In yeah, them. yeah. I those are all great shows. Um, I finally did finish Hacks because of you. Actually, okay. you pushed me to finish season two, which I absolutely loved. Um, highly recommend yes. anyone listening go watch so Hacks, good. go watch Reboot, go watch um, Abbott yeah. Elementary. Um, some other shows from an outside perspective. That I, and this is probably just me, like, if I was on a show, I'd love to be on a show like this. Yes. Or if I could, like, see you working on a show, it'd be just your, like, comedy sense of humor. Um, definitely, like, y- your Broad City. Yes. Um, the, the other two on HBO mm-hmm. Max. Like, those, those are just, I love all f- off-kilter humor. Yeah. I think, um, which, th- that kind of just made me think of, like, what would you say you could describe like your comedic voice what do you what do you think like really do you love to poke mm. fun at and what do you like to what do you like to shed Ooh, light on yeah um oh I don't know I, I weirdly I have a lot of like I, I haven't even you know figured out why this is but I feel like I have written a lot of stuff you know making fun of the rich like yeah. the dirty rich <laughs> yes. um and yeah I haven't it's not like I'm like you know, so poor, I'm, like, so resentful or anything. <laughs> right, right. Um, I am poor, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's it's a really easy class of people to make fun of because of, you know, how wasteful they can be. And just, like, the things that they take for granted are just, like, you know, basic needs that everybody else has. And I think it's really funny to, like, notice when they, like, are, are just being... I don't know, silly and rich. Mm-hmm. So I, I have had a lot of writings come from making fun of the rich. Um, and then I, I will say wordplay is another good good, mm-hmm. good thing I like to um, use a lot. I don't always, it's not like just puns or anything. I kind of, kind of hate puns. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, wordplay, I like Clever Canal. I feel like, I feel like I do a lot of wordplay. Yeah. Like just like, Maybe a little like clever, clever jokes. Um, but 
but I do I do love some physical humor, some like mm. weird stuff. I don't know. My my stuff my, my comedy tends to be very absurd at times. Um so I don't know, it could be like I would say if I were to compare them to like maybe not I don't want to compare myself to these people and then, you know, people will be like, This these are way better than you but uh <laughs> I would say a lot of my, like, comedy inspiration comes from, like, 30 Rock, mm. uh, Broad City, yeah. Community. I would say, like, some of my, like, newer looks at comedy do come from, like, Reboot and uh, Hacks. Just kind of, like, a new way to take comedy in, in less of, like, a formulaic way. Like, Broad City, Broad City is an interesting one, but I feel like 30 Rock specifically has... Kind of like a format to it, and it, it's such a good show. But um, Hacks does a really good job of like doing a full story in each season, and I really like that. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I hope that that kind of gives you an idea. No, yeah, of that my comedy. It definitely does. No, I, I think people listening get more of an idea of like what you're about, what you like to poke fun at. Yeah. Um, the world of comedy today, over the last like. 10, 15 years has, I would say, shifted a lot in terms of what is maybe okay to joke about, who you are, depends on what you can joke about, um, how long you can joke about it, what exact, like, topics that you're joking about. Um, what would you say, would you say it's easier to be a comedian today or um, not than, like, say, 10, 15 years ago? Um, I would say... As far as, like, easy or... I would say maybe it would have been easier 15 years ago. Um, that said, I would much prefer to be a comedian in today's time. I, I, I'm glad there's, like, stuff that can't be joked about anymore. Like, not everything, you know? There's definitely, like, sensitivity with can cancel culture that's just, like, taking it too far. But, like, I, I don't know. I, I think there's some things that should be off limits to some people and I think I think there's so much funny stuff out there and you can be hilarious without like you know always like pushing the ballot without always like finding those boundaries and just like barely crossing it like you can be funny without being like super super edgy and that doesn't mean everybody shouldn't be edgy but um I don't know I think I think there's a lot of uh comedians out there that do kind of see themselves as like I have to be like making like cultural points or like political points to be funny or I have to be like making some kind of statement with my humor rather than just like I don't know being funny and just like bringing joy into people's lives you know yeah. I, I'm definitely definitely a lot more along the lines of just like here's my comedy sit and listen to it watch it for mm -hmm. a half hour or whatever and then, like, go about your day. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, life-changing. It doesn't have to, like, um, you know, make you really think about things or, like, yeah. or make you uncomfortable. Like, it can just be, like, silly for a while. I would say that's more my my type of humor. I think it's, I don't know. I, I We're also just a lot more clever in today's humor, you know? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I love looking at how comedy has evolved from, like, Charlie Chaplin of, like, just, like, physical humor. Straight slapstick, um, yeah, yes. yeah. And, like, honestly, Charlie Chaplin is a king. Like, he is... There, There's a couple movies that I watched that I genuinely, like, laughed my ass off. And there's just no wordplay at all. Yeah. And then and then you get into more, like... Um, I don't know. I would say more... I really like Airplane. Mm. That humor. It's a lot of wordplay and stuff. Um, and I know, like, some of those films of that era were a little bit like pushing the ballot a little bit more edgy a little bit offensive at times um and then moving forward then you have like the 2000s humor that's like i don't know i i think about how much shit amy schumer gets for like her um like raunchy like offensive humor mm -hmm. and i feel like there was like a weird pressure on a lot of comedians to be like gross and like edgy and sexual especially like female comedians it's like we don't want to like we don't want to hear about you making sandwiches like talk about talk about sex that's all we want to hear from women is sex and yeah. like 
you can make sex funny, then you can make it as a comedian, as a lady. And I feel like we're moving past that, that like, time of, like, offensive humor. And we're, we're getting to, like, really, really, really good comedy. Like, going back to Hacks, can't recommend it enough. It is so funny. The writing today on some of these shows are so good. Like, I just didn't know comedy could get this good. Mm. And, like, I'm just really glad that we're here. So, like, there is not another time I would want to be a comedian than right now. Yeah. It was a really long yeah, route no, to getting there. That is, yeah, you were giving us, you were dropping history. You were going, no, you were going way like, back. I don't really no, want to talk about this history, but no, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about it. No, no, no. I, I think it's very important. And I will say, um, I, shame on me, I still have not seen Airplane. I have not, it, it's very, um, my own comedic journey is interesting in terms of like, I have not seen what I think a lot of people would staple as like great comedic films. Yeah. Or like great great comedies or products of the time. Yeah. Airplane being one of them. Um, uh, I can't think of other things, but, but like, I've seen a couple, like, um, another I think, example of like, maybe a later comedy that might have been, eff- might be offensive now, but like at the time is, you can still see that it was funny. Um, Monty Python. Like yeah. they have, they have a oh, lot yeah. of, they have great, <laughs> I literally, I just saw a video yesterday. Um, it's in one of their sketches or movies that, one of the people in Monty Python is like, I'm, I want you all to identify me as a woman now and I will only be a woman and you will refer to me as such forever until the end of time. And they're all like, where are you going to put the baby if you get pregnant or whatever? And like, it's <laughs> like, it's, like, oh it's yeah. Like, um, but it's just, it's, I think it's interesting that comedy can have that kind of lens to, um, be not only like a product of its time of when it's being made, but also kind of look forward to the future. Obviously, like if a joke like that was made right now, like I don't think a lot of people would necessarily find that quote unquote funny or um, maybe feel like they could laugh at it. Yeah. Because I feel like th- that's that's the thing I feel like I struggle with with comedy of just like, I, I agree with you. I think comedians, um, certain comedians have like this idea that like here's a line that I can tiptoe up to Mm -hmm. or can slightly cross and like if you're offended then that's your own project and that's that's your own thing obviously everyone has their own philosophy with that at the same time I think that comedians kind of are in a special realm where at the end of the day it's a joke (laughs) like I don't I, I feel like our generation especially like younger people I think there's people on both sides are our age of just like will find anything to become oppressed, victimized. Yeah. Uh, like, how does this, uh, this is hurting me versus like, sometimes the world is so fucked up, is so messed up that like, all you can do is laugh. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that, that's like the fun realm that we get to live in. Of like, how can we, and, and like you said, sometimes it doesn't even, the things we're joking about don't even have to necessarily say something big or grand. Yeah. It's just like, and a sense of escapism, which is, like, truly, I think, what comedy started as, began as, of just, like, people want to forget about their own shit yeah. in their own life. Uh, kind of going back a little bit, I know you, so you went to a Lutheran high school, yes. correct? Um, do you, would you say that kind of, so you, would you say you um, grew up religious? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know... I went to church, we went to a really small, um, it was just like, it was just like a non-denominational church, mm-hmm. just like as basic as it gets. Um, and it was fine. There were just a few other kids there. I mostly just like drew during church or like played on the iPad. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or you know what? We probably didn't, I, we didn't have iPads back then. I was not, I was not an <laughs> iPad kid, um, but I definitely, definitely just like didn't really pay attention in church and then at school it was you know growing up in a lutheran school definitely weird there's like there's chapel you have religion class um and so i don't know i would it's just like i haven't like i haven't dissected much about my religious upbringing so um i don't know i think it was kind of just like always thought of as like Something you have to learn, something you have to, like, do, kind of like a chore. Mm. I never really saw it as, like, 
really a huge part of me, except for one time we did go on um, this like religion tour or something like that, where we like went to a big like religious conference and like there were a bunch of like Christian pop stars that that sang and we got mm. to like get their autograph and stuff and I cried. Oh yeah, yeah. I no, that was it's it's um I, during that time I like had a religious awakening, but I think I was just like mostly starstruck because of. Oh, what's her name? It's uh, Nicole something, I think. It's some uh, some Christian pop star that I like really liked a lot. Mm. Uh, but other than that, I don't know. Going to a Lutheran, having having a Lutheran upbringing, it's it was one that faded really quickly after I was no longer. like, involved in it all the time. Mm. Like, as soon as I went to college, I didn't have to go to church anymore. I didn't right. have, like, chapel. I didn't have religion class. Um, and... No, it's okay. It's, um... Well, this is one question I will... Just because okay. I want to bring this up. No, no, no Because do. Um, you have described this, and the second that you told me about it, I still think about it when I see you or think about you in high school, which is not a lot. That's, that sounds weird. You think about me I in think high about school you in high school a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, really young, 16 year old Canel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You had a class where you had to plan your funeral. Yes. Oh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, I, I, could you just walk us through that? Of like, yeah. what, why, what was the teacher like? What was the, cl- was this for Christian living? <laughs> uh, this was for, oh fuck. I don't even remember what the class was called, but. Um, this one was a class taught by a pastor. Mm. Um, he was, without sharing too much inf- information about him, he was the father of a few of my friends in high school. Mm. Um, unfortunate for them. Um, yeah. yeah. They're, they're never going to hear this. We're but, uh, yeah, that guy, interesting guy. Um, I used to, like, prank him in class. Like, he would print off a bunch of papers uh sorry this is off topic he would print off yeah he would print off like tests for everybody and i'd hold like 10 of them under my desk and then we'd be like you gotta go print more there's not enough (laughs) and he'd get so mad he's like this friend is always doing this to me in this class oh my god that's really funny um but yeah it was it was if that tells you anything i really did not take this class seriously at all and uh, especially at the point that he brings out our our assignment to plan our own funeral. And basically, it was as basic as funerals can be. He was like, pick from these verses. These are your options. You don't even get to pick your own Bible verses. Oh uh, pick from these hymns, uh, which I picked Nearer My God to Be just because of the Titanic theme. Um, and that one just like happened to be on the list of exceptional acceptable hymns and exceptional and exceptional i will say that one is exceptionally acceptable it's really sad i don't people to cry at it but um and then it was like uh plan your your like your lesson that you want to be told at your funeral and at no point in this funeral was there a section to like talk about myself (laughs) or like because that would be selfish exactly how how dare you it's literally it was just a church service with a dead body (laughs) at it it's pretty much all it was i i cannot fathom even trying to attempt to do that in high school i think it's perfectly fine with um showcasing mortality or uh a, a, a teenager's like infinite death to them that's fine like yeah. we're, we're all gonna die yes but the fact you had to plan your own funeral yeah. for a class yeah. in high school Pretty weird. it sounds illegal yeah. and it should be yeah <laughs> we all had to sign a waiver after that class. No. <laughs> we had to get parents approval <laughs> honestly they did so much without our parents approval i'm sure they did i mean that's what it, private schools it's yes. oh my god yeah a dangerous weird school. place weird place do you think um your slight religious upbringing going to a uh, Lutheran high school, like, has that had any kind of impact on how you view comedy or what you like to make fun of or are willing to make fun of? Um, honestly, I feel like I didn't really quite become a person until after I was 
out of a very like rigid religious like place um kind of like fully changed who I was going to college and like kind of figured out who I was only after leaving high school so I I would say in some ways like I, I look back at it with like you know comedic thoughts of like how how weird it was that I went to a high school where I had to plan my own funeral and it was so small we didn't even have a football team um and uh I don't know we there was a lot of weird things we shared a building with Sprint for a while the company (laughs) like you could just look through this very small window and see business people and they could also like look through this very small window and see like teams (laughs) Um, some go out about that yeah. some seems wrong <laughs> yeah no it was weird it was like they were like we can't afford this building so we're gonna share it with a company <laughs> it was weird um, oh my god yeah um, so like I, I'm, I mean I look back at my time there very laugh- laughably mm-hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't say it's like fond memories like I'm also like not super close with pretty much anybody there's a couple people that I'm still kind of close with. But for the most part, like, everything meaningful, and as far as, like, career-wise and comedy-wise, everything meaningful happened after I left. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? No, it does. It's, I, I, I understand what you mean. I, I think just, uh, obviously, like, getting out of high school, going to college, like, becoming your own person, that has its own journey. But also just, like, making your own decisions, being able to be around, like, uh, different-minded people, yeah. people maybe who do agree with your beliefs or don't. I think that that is definitely imperative in order to grow as a human being yeah. um, and find out what, what it is you want to do. With that said, you said you didn't really kind of like, I guess, get bitten by the film bug until your senior year of high school? or um, Yeah, it was it was sparked my sophomore year in the Christian living oh, class. Okay, okay. Gotcha. And then my senior year, I had a couple science like video um assignments that like kind of really sparked the film bug got you so with that said if you weren't pursuing comedy um what what do you think is there something else you see in like an alternate reality multiverse whatever you see canal doing um just as well or yeah um i would say there's a couple routes it could have gone um I, I love photography. I could see myself maybe having a photography career um, if I, like, wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, which, like, thank God. Uh, <laughs> no. I, 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 photography is so much fun, and I love it, and I, I, I think I'm very good at it, but I, I love that it's fun. Yeah. I don't really want it to be work ever. Right. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that I can do it especially like in tandem with um, a lot of comedy stuff like film and comedy like you you kind of need you need the two together to make some not not every time but like comedy and film just like kind of work out perfectly to go together i mean Um, all the for those that don't know anytime there's any promotional stuff from anything it's usually uh, photos by canal <laughs> um so if that's telling you anything this, this girl knows what she's doing behind the lens Thank you. and in front of the lens so yes. and behind the lens writing for the lens yes <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. and around the lens and around the lens and to the side of the lens <laughs> and in, inside of the lens beneath the lens she knows the lens yeah <laughs> uh no that that's really that's really cool is there was there something did were you into photography like in high school or were you kind of was there a route were you like oh yeah i'll probably be a doctor too go to yale never never brother absolutely never (laughs) i we the whole family knew um one was going to be a book student one was going to be an art student Mm, um yeah it was it was known but yeah i would say photography or i did also really like musical theater Mm -hmm. i just like singing in general singing is really fun um if i had taken like dance classes or like you know actual like voice lessons for longer than like the two times i went to voice lessons because i got embarrassed (laughs) um i don't know i I could see singing being something i would have really enjoyed yeah Um, I don't know if I'd be as good as, like, comedy or photography, but I would have enjoyed that, I feel like, in another way. Yeah. 
um, this kind of it just kind of came out of me thinking about it. Um, you, you and brother are adopted. Mm -hmm. um, is has there ever been like well, what what was that kind of like finding out um, or just like what what did that look like and have you ever wanted or thought about like trying to find either of your birth parents or yeah well, what is what does that look like for you good question um as far as like finding out it's never really a surprise um, yeah <laughs> my my brother and I are very Asian and my my dad he's he's half Filipino so he's got a little bit of that in him but mm -hmm. my mom white as can be mm -hmm. uh and, and they were never like secretive about it. It was like as soon as we could hear, they were like, "We're adopted." Just, like, just know that it's not going to be a surprise. to you at night. Yeah, you didn't cry on us. Yeah, you're not one of us. By the way, good morning, sweetie. Good you're adopted. <laughs> it's your morning ritual. <laughs> there was yeah, there was never like a sit down conversation that I remember at least. Yeah. Um, about that, it was just kind of like I always knew. And, you know, I was given plenty of love and support from my parents that I never have felt like I need to find, um, you know, like my birth parents. It would be obviously very cool, um, but I, I also don't want to, like, build it up to be anything, you know, like, who knows? Like, they might not want to see you. Right, they yeah. might, like, have their own life. Like, we could even not even be able to understand each other. And right. so, like... I don't know. If it happens, it happens. I'm happy to, you know, meet my birth parents. But, I mean, I'm fully happy with, like, the life I've been given. Yeah. So, I, I, there's no part of me that feels like I've been, like, missing out, you know. I yeah. hope that doesn't make them sad. Right. Like, no, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's, like, what they wanted for Absolutely. me, you know. Yes. Yeah. They wanted to provide love, shelter, food, <laughs> of what parents provide to kids. Yeah. <laughs> um transcends blood obviously so no yeah that that's that's really really special i think um that's kind of all the questions what was it like for you when you found out you weren't adopted <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess opposite side of the same coin yeah. um for me i feel like my parents were constantly you know waking me up and saying like you did i birthed you yeah. <laughs> look i what pushed you, did you out look body. what you did <laughs> Ten and a half weeks early. This is what I get. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I had I'm, I have scars because of you that I'm never gonna get back. Yeah, <laughs> I've got fat on my ass from you. Um, yeah. No, yeah. It's I was not a pleasant birth for my for my mother. Oh, um, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. Well, uh, you I love mean, to make I, an I entrance. Out. I do love to make an entrance, <laughs> even when I'm born. Yeah. Uh, what can I say? Uh, no, yeah. Ten and a half weeks early. It's it's kind of wild. It's I almost died when I was born. Um, but you what? I almost died when oh. I was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you um, said I was stabbed when I was born. <laughs> I was like, ooh. I was stabbed with the reality of almost dying. Oh, yeah. how did you almost die? So I, I was supposed to be born in June. I'm born in March because I just <gasps> was like, damn, wanting to come out so soon. I guess I don't. Mm. I was ready for the world. The world was ready for me. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, and they had to like hook me up to tubes in order to even breathe. And I was also so small that like my parents got this like little like egg made and they placed me inside of it that they still have. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, it was basically just like my breathing was not doing great. Mm. Also, it's like missed out on 10 and a half weeks of vital growing. So sure, sure. <laughs> there's a, there's probably some things up here that are still not clicking. Oh yeah. Here. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's how I almost died. Oh my God. Um, but other than that, like I, yeah, I kind of, I, I don't think I ever, I guess there was, there were times I was like, maybe I am adopted just because I'm like, because I knew my mom was white, but I was like, but then also I, I just knew, like I knew I wasn't, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, I. One time I heard my parents having sex. <laughs> like, oh, no. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> whoops. I'll never forget that day. Hold yeah, on. because tell me about that. Because it happened in Should fourth I grade. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, it happened in fourth grade, and I'll never forget it because it was the day I was going. We were having, like, 
class representative votes oh. and I was running for class representative oh, no. and I like had gone I went woken up early that day <laughs> to like, get ready put on my own like good like politician clothes oh, <laughs> my God. I like, went to like go say hi to my parents and I like heard sounds of love making um mom if you're listening to this I'm so sorry <laughs> I told you the story you you already know this um and I kind of just backed oh. away from the door slowly and then um <laughs> kind of uh told my mom later that day that I had heard that. Um, but I will say, I guess it was like kill two birds with one stone because that was the day that I found out my parents loved each other still mm-hmm. and that um, like Santa and the Easter Bunny weren't real. Oh, because same day. Because, well, because... Because they we, were dressed they were like, as gonna... Santa and the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> it's their only way to get it on. <laughs> God. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. No. no, because later that night, my dad was at work, but my mom and I basically had like talked about what, what I had heard. And she was like, Is there anything else you want to know? And then I was like, Is Santa real? No. I was like, You might as well just hit get it all yeah. out now. And she was like, Santa was real. And um the idea of Santa was real, mm-hmm. but Santa himself is not real. Yeah. So yeah, that was a very, very important day for me. Yeah. In the fourth grade. Did you win? Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it was like, was it wasn't all it, bad. No, no, no. It was. It threw off no, 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 no. Your it, speech? No, 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 not at all. No, um, if anything, it made it better. Yeah, it did for sure. For sure. <laughs> I was invigorated with the love of my parents. Yes. Um. um. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> and I think that that's where we'll end that. Okay. <laughs> but before we go, are there any things you're like, Working on, you got coming out. You'd love to plug now to all thirteen people listening. Oh, it's yes. few and far between, but you'll get your numbers and uh, that non-negotiable fifty dollars that we were. Yes, exactly. We were um, yeah. Other than plugging my Venmo, mm-hmm. I would love to plug <laughs> Pot Roast. It yeah. is a series on YouTube that my friend Ron and I are uh, making. We every month. We sit down and roast a movie, and then we edit it and put it on YouTube for you. Our page is called Lady Bits. Our Instagram is called Real underscore Lady Bits, I believe. Um, but yeah, we're a very funny lady duo um, doing comedy. And then also, you know, be on the lookout for Middle Class Snacks Season 2. That'll be coming out soon. Otherwise, I think. I think that's everything, uh, unless you want to follow my photos page, which is photos, B-U-Y, canal. It's not B-Y. Yeah, you have to buy the photos. The clever canal who hates puns. I hate puns. But. But I am a pun. She's a lovely pun. I hate myself. (laughs) (laughs) I hate myself. (laughs) You have to be self-aware. It's okay. No, no, no. You got it. Um, Thanks for humbling me. Definitely. Of course. That's all that this this really is. Is them. No, you should definitely check out Lady Bits, check out Pot Roast. These ladies are so funny. Also, we should preface, I know sometimes I say Annalise or we'll say Ron. That's just Annalise's nickname. Um, yeah. In case you... In case you're dumb. In case you don't know what 2 plus 2 is. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's yes. 2 plus 4, bitch. Um, yeah. What's something that happened to you last week that mm-hmm. you liked? and Something you're looking forward to mm. next week? Um. Well... If yesterday counts as last week, yeah, okay. Um, it's a, it's yeah. It's last Saturday was the end of that week. For yeah, you, and today is the today end of the new is week. the new yeah, week. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so, last week yesterday, I went to the lake with Ron and my boyfriend Brandon, um, also a very talented filmmaker and comedian, um, and he took our photos by the lake and. Just as like promotional stuff for Lady Bits, and that was so much fun. We smoked a blunt, mm. we took some pictures. They look amazing. Um, very excited to share all of them. That was that was a it was a perfect day yesterday, really. And then uh, something I'm looking forward to next week is oh, um, this coming Saturday, Ron and I are gonna go see Way's Blood. Oh yes, which will yeah. be really fun. I'm so excited. Oh my for gosh. That. No, that will be very fun. Also, y'all are, you're going to watch the River Tournament. Yes. That yeah. will be a sight to see. I want vids. I want pics. I don't know if uh, I unfortunately did get scheduled I to know. work. So it's whatever. It's fine. It's okay. Um, 
But I'll go. I'll head down there. I'll see the review. We'll see it next year. I'll see year. it. I'll see it next year. We'll be here for a, for a while. I think so. Um, <laughs> no, that's super cool. I'll have you'll have so much fun at Wave Blood. Her music is so ethereal. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I don't know if people can hear that. Spilling She's cereal. I think my roommate is um turning into a squirrel. Sounds like. It sounds like she's transforming. Sounds like she's not getting enough attention. Mm, I wonder where the cat gets it from. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, I'll count. Yesterday is my last week as well. Okay. Yesterday, I um. I had to take this test for shift leading at my work, Foxtrot, called Surf Safe Manager Food Preparation Certification, whatever. I passed, thankfully. Good job. It was just annoying because it was like an eight-hour online course oh, I had to take, and then Jesus. like this test was ninety questions. I will <gasps> say, super stupid because like the questions were, it was like that stupid shit of like pick the most correct one, and so like some of them were uh, very stupid and just misleading. Like I think I probably got one of them. Like one of them I know I got wrong. I think was like, what, um, as manager, what what is the best thing to keep personal hygiene for your workers? Or whatever. Gosh. And it was like, the options were like trimming beard, clipping nails, um, wearing gloves, washing hands. And so I picked washing hands, but I think that, I guess, I don't know, that must not have been right. So besides the point, I pass, and your boy is food service Good. manager certified. So let me handle all your food bits. Yeah. Um, but also actually don't. Because I'm like, I really would like to He picked washing hands. <laughs> and really he should have picked trimming beard. Trimming beard is the most important. I don't yeah. want to no Beard bits in the food. Yeah. In all seriousness, no, I don't. Um, I don't want to be working in food forever. But this work, this lasts for five years, so I'm certified. Yeah. Um, looking forward to um the next weekend is the last weekend of my seventy five hard. <gasps> so literally this time next week will like the last Sunday I'm doing it and then I finish on March 16th and March 17th is the same time oh wow I will be celebrating with a beer <laughs> I will be celebrating with a drink with friends um yeah no I've been really proud of myself for sticking with it that is it's, so impressive I I'm kind of crazy it's but it is what it is and I, I just wanted to see if I could do it and here we are so yeah that, that was my my good my good for this last week this week um if you've managed to stay till the end, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Roads Less Traveled. As always, this has been the delightful Declan with the clever Canal. And go follow all her shit. She'd be making good stuff. She's funny as fuck. She's talented. She's got some real good shit coming out. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Love thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.